of high notes too. So right now I still have some work to do on the pipes. At the bottom of the feet, the pipes have little pieces of wood in them that in the previous organ in which they were installed, that we use to balance out the sound of the different pipes so they come at a similar amount of volume. And you can tune the pitch of the pipes by changing the length of the column using the stoppers at the top. So what I'm still working on, and this part of the work in progress, is getting all of the uh, uh, pipes to sound at a similar level of volume. You see that one's a little softer. Okay. And that one is similar. And so by changing the wood in the bottom, it controls the amount of airflow into each pipe. So I'm going to work on all the pipes, then find the one I like the sound of the best, and then I'll match all the other pipes to that. And then once I have that, I'll tune them all. Because at different levels of air input, you get different pitch. So you also you get the harmonic. I think I can demonstrate that for you. I was studying the acoustics of organ pipes is really a fascinating thing. So let's take this note. Now I'm going to add more air. You hear? You get a high pitch. And, I'll, and you get the low pitch because you get a different harmonic depending on the amount of air you're putting in. So I have to decide for each pipe, which note do I want to get, and then adjust the amount of air into it. So all the compositions I did for the notes that I had that are stated on the pipes no longer are playable, because now I'm changing all the notes that the pipes have, but still it provides me inspiration for writing these compositions. So you can still play those compositions on another instrument, so I play them now on my MIDI keyboard. So it's uh, an excuse to write different compositions. Then I try to play the same compositions with my new arrangement of pipes, and I do a variation that works with the notes that I have. So it's all about what notes are available. Okay, so that's, that's, that's this one. Now we're going to take the book in and go through the rest of the book, which also involves some historical pieces of music. And I think I'm going to change the sequence I was... Oh, I can turn that off. Let's turn what that off, okay. And there we go. Okay, so and if you want information about it, there's there are information things here that have that tell all about the book and, and this. Now, this is I, I just got this uh, two days ago. This is the first printer's proof of the book. I just have I have to when I get back. Now, inside the book, there's this record jacket. And what's this about? In 1981. Dicko Faust and Nick Caraccio and I and two other people who aren't here played a piece at the Allen Stone Gallery for the opening of an exhibition I had there called I Want to Be Riveted, and we were Old Man Rivet and the Rivet Heads. So this was on May 5th of 1981, which was 5-5, five, five. so at 5.55, the five of us did a five-minute piece. <laughs> oh, I was wondering if you want to call it I Want to Be Riveted, Revisited. I think I want to pull out, I want to be re riveted. <laughs> so we're going to play this for you. Uh, we'll play this for you now. Okay. Uh, and I was going to do some of these other things first, but I think it would be nice to hear. So, but what, what is this record? This record jacket comes with every copy of the book. It's a small edition. There's uh, 26 copies. There's going to be uh, 15 deluxe copies. Um, there's uh, 15 regular copies, five deluxe, like this, uh, five in leather, uh, and five artist proofs. Um, for like the three of us and uh, Gerald Jackson, who's Adventures in Catawba Wado, uh, which is another a piece I'll talk about in a few minutes. That CD comes with it too of that from 1972 piece of music I composed then. So this is a, the um, interdisciplinary musical artist books. It's a different kind of genre. We had an exhibit with a number of those. Uh, I think it was last year, wasn't it, that we had that. So this is... Uh, um, a subgenre of, of book art, but what I'm doing with my chairs is extending the reading experience to be the full body experience so that you are immersed in the book uh, figuratively with your figure. Um, so this is the record jacket for the recording of the 45 of I Want to Be Riveted that we never, was never released 
because when Rosalind Solomon recorded it, a bunch of people crowded in front of the microphone, and it was all muffled, which sounded good to me, but the re people who pressed the records didn't want their name associated with it. So, so, so they... Um, they um, so then the, the tape disappeared, and so I was never able to, to get them pressed. So all we have is the record jacket. So I still have these letterpress printed at the Center for Book Arts, and... Um, uh, you can see, the, the, there it is. That's, old, that's me as old man Rivet, then, when I had hair. And, um, and there's, there's the, on the back cover all about the rivets and the, and the rivet heads, and all of the people who played, signed, and what they played with. So. Okay, so now if you'll all uh, be kind enough to have a seat uh, for as long as you can tolerate it, we're, we're going to we're gonna give you five, five minutes of I want to be riveted as best we can recreate it. And, uh, and then I'm going to go through some of the other pieces in the book. 